Hello Minions, Wheezy here and today I'm going to take you through some strategies for being successful in Warzone solos. This will translate to other Warzone uh, game modes as well, um, but I'm going to focus on a solos games that I had here. So let's dive into it and I'll kind of explain what I'm going for here. So in this Warzone solo match, um, this is my first solos victory, I haven't played a lot of solos. Um, and to be honest, uh, I was a little surprised by this victory. And I think the value that you'll get out of this video is from me kind of walking you through the strategic choices that I made and the tactical decisions I made in this game. Because what this game, I believe, shows really well is if you make good choices, use strategy and use tactics, which is a big part of what I try to show on this channel, um, you can have success versus what you'll see, I think, from a lot of the, you know, pro Warzone streamers, streamers is they've played, you know, hundreds of games of Warzone and they can just, they can just grab their weapons and run out and they can beat anyone in a 1v1 fight. And that's all well and good. And that's really fun to watch. But there's a good chance that you're probably not one of those people. I sure as hell know that I'm not. Um, you know, I've actually played a lot of Call of Duty going all the way back to when I really got into it with Call of Duty 4 um, and then console FPS games long before that. So I've had hundreds of hours, probably thousands at this point, playing first person shooters um, and maybe you haven't. I play in a way that I think is portable to people who don't spend hundreds and thousands of hours playing shooters. Um, you get an advantage when you just are better on the trigger and better with the sticks than, than other people are, uh, or if you're on PC, a keyboard and mouse. Um, so what I'm going to talk to you about is the strategies and tactics you can use that give you um, an ability to be successful even if you're not the best shooter in the world. And that's part of what I do in my weapon tactics videos as well. Part of being able to use one of the weapons that's off meta, that's not one of the best weapons in the game and still be successful, is changing your play style, right? The, the people who play uh, you know, professionally and they play to win and the, the sweaty boys all the time, they pick the best weapons in the game, typically, and then they run out and they just say, hey, this is the fastest time to kill with the best accuracy and I can beat you in a one-on-one one -on -one fight. Right? And that's great. Um, but that's not what I'm going to show you here. So we're getting into the match. And the first thing I'm going to do is stop and let you listen a little bit. Someone's parachuting in behind me. And with my headphones on, I could hear this. So let's see if you can kind of pick up the subtle hint of audio that you can hear here. very subtle, but I can hear a cloth flapping really close behind me. I could turn and look, but I'm just assuming there's someone behind me, and so what I'm trying to do is pick a landing spot. I'm going to choose the door right by this house to see if I can drop in there and immediately turn around, and if someone's following me, it gives me an advantage. So I kind of hit the door, turn around, and there, I've got the jump on him, and I've got several seconds to start shooting him before he hits the ground, so... Sometimes I've had this happen in, in solos um, several times, which is saying something because I haven't played a lot of solos. And also in Battle Royale in general, sometimes you get people following you in. So it's good to pay attention to those audio, audio cues. If you don't have a headset, it might be worth looking around just to make sure that someone's not following you. Or it can't hurt any time you land, just immediately turn around and check and see if someone followed you. Um, so doing some early looting. Um, I get kind of lucky here, and it feels like it's setting me up for a good show when the 141 and a C4 drop out of this crate. Um, I feel like I'm getting set up, so I'll let you kind of... I'm going to fast forward through uh, a little bit this early looting and, and catch up with you when the next important thing happens. So right now, it, in addition to um, just the general looting early game to get weapons, I'm also looking for this scavenger contract. I like getting scavenger contracts early on in any type of war zone um, because it gives you three loot crates with decent drops. It also moves you around the map so it kind of exposes you to more loot, gives you some money, and I believe since the latest update in Season 3, um, I believe it always draw, drops an armor satchel at the end. So um, it's a good thing to do to A, just get you moving through the map, get you some equipment, and, uh, and so that's what my kind of early process is for Warzone in general is to drop either on a scavenger contract or a, I call them a circle peak, they're the, the capture point contracts. Um, if you're with a good group of slayers, then the bounty contracts can also be a good start, um, but I choose scavengers most often. You'll see it's early game and in solos, you know, I'm being cautious of people who might be 
in the area and looking to, to, to pick me off when I'm in the open. I'm very cautious in war zone in general of moving across the open. Um, so, so you'll see me kind of, you know, moving this early. Is, a lot of people play solo pretty slow and campy, um, which I try not to do. That can be a good tactic, and maybe in some video I'll, I'll explain that. That can be really effective if you want to get to the late game and you, you're not confident in your gun skill. Um, lately in solos, I've been trying to play Warzone um, and trying to get engagements because I'm trying to work on... Here you'll see, I got a, I get a sniper rifle drop and the armor satchel. Um, I'm trying to get more gunfights in Warzone just to get more experience with it and to try out different weapons. I've been uh, playing with the SCAR lately in Warzone. So, so here, especially in solos, the self-revive kit is, is a good early buy because... You don't have teammates to revive you. If you get knocked down, it's self-revive or nothing. So now I'm trying to look for the next place to go on the map. And um, I decided that I want to try a bounty contract. Because again, I'm trying to get into gunfights. Um, I think that's a... I think you don't want to necessarily take these games too super seriously. I mean, the best of the best can just walk out there and melt people. And the main reason for that is because they've played tons and tons of games. They've gotten in lots of gunfights. Practice makes perfect. So um, don't necessarily put too much pressure on yourself to be perfect out of the gate. Um, and I'm going to share these strategies with you so that you don't have to get, you know, you don't have to play dozens and dozens of games to get some good gun skill. Um, I'm still being cautious of people around. I don't hear any footsteps. And I'm assuming since this contract is here that no one's in here. So I'm looking around for loot and I get melted. Self-revive didn't help me there. Look at the bottom. Look who killed me. Obscuro. That becomes important later. So Gulag. I've still, I've mentioned this before. I'm still going to do a Gulag video for Gulag strategies. Um, just briefly while we're waiting, my Gulag strategy is to sprint to the middle, listen for footsteps, and then throw my tactical grenade if the person hasn't already come around the side, and then uh, move to get an angle. So, here it's going to be one more round before I jump in and uh, show you how that works. Alright, so this is after the patch where you use SMGs and assault rifles, so straight to the middle. Quiet, listening for footsteps. If you don't hear any. I believe it's a smoke grenade this time, that's why I use that frag instead of the tactical grenade. This guy got a little turned around, so I'm coming back in. All right, so I know that that bounty is where that motherfucker killed me. I consider briefly going back there, but he's already, not only does he already have the gun that he killed me with, but he's got my guns now. <laughs> so that's probably not the best place for me to go. I'm looking for another scavenger contract that's somewhere reasonable. TV station is a bit of a hot zone usually, so I don't really want to go there. Um, so I decide to try to go, perhaps move to the hospital as I'm just kind of coasting in here. Maybe even a little bit farther out to promenade, so... So that's what I'm going for, and uh, it's a long, a long coast, which can be dangerous if you've got decent snipers in the game. But something interesting happens when I land, so I'll move up to that. So I was gonna try and push all the way out to the promenade, the far way point there. Um, I realized I wasn't quite gonna make it, so I decided that I could drop in a little bit faster to the hospital. Um, that's why I started cutting my parachute. So, you know, I've kind of adjusted. That's why I set these kind of options. And as I'm coming in, I'm looking for people along the ground. It's relatively obvious when you're parachuting in because not only do you make a lot of noise, but you're really obvious in the sky. So this is a dangerous, uh, a dangerous time to come in. So as I'm dropping in, I'm being aware of if I see people. I consider landing on the roof of this building and then kind of at the last second decide not to and then come in short. And there's a guy in front of me. And he's got weapons. I, I got some good... I got some good headshots with that pistol. I'm convinced the only reason he went down the way he did is those were some good shots, so I beat him. <laughs> I beat him with a pistol, and he had an M4. So, uh, that was lucky for me. Not only did I get another kill, um, but now I'm back in the game, and I actually have I actually have a decent weapon, a little bit of armor, and uh, the next thing I'm going to do is loot this building. Now, here briefly, I consider, I'm like, oh, there's an M4. You know what would be nice? is if I just had two M4s, then instead of reloading, I could do what's called a New York reload and just switch guns, but the game won't let you pick up two, which I which I learned in that moment, which, uh, you know, I guess it makes sense, but it's a little, a little sad. 
Uh, I have an assault rifle here, the M4. I picked up an Uzi um, as a close range weapon. I expect that at this point in the game, I'm probably more likely going to experience a close range engagement. Um, and here, I decide that the M4 is flexible enough that I would take the riot shield. And that will turn out to be a decent choice late in the game. Um, the reason for the riot shield is I don't what I don't really ever want to use the riot shield, you know, unless there's a special occasion with someone where it makes sense to have it out in front of me to. Um, but one thing it does do is when it's on your back, it protects you from getting shot in the ass. So I figure in solos, it's probably good right now, especially for me already having gone to the gulag. It's probably good for me to have my back covered. Looting, money, uh, the contracts. Money, the, the economy in Warzone is the game, right? So, and especially in solos, um, you want, you know, you want to make sure you've got plenty of armor. You want to make sure you can get UAVs. You want to have self-revives. So, moving around and getting money and getting equipment is a big part of being successful in Warzone in general, but especially in solos. You want to be better equipped and uh, better prepared than, the, than every person that you run into. So um, when you get closer to the end circle, that's what you're gonna run into. Munitions boxes are a use immediately thing. If you see one, always pick it up, immediately place it down, use it, and then carry with whatever other tactical equipment you have. No reason to carry a munitions box around with you. Uh, I mean, there's just none. I'm still being mindful of people around. Um, I'm listening for footsteps, but I also know that I'm basically trying to gear up. It's already going to be to the point, you know, 46 people left in the game. Um, I need to get money and equipment, and so I'm listening and being cautious. But at the same time, I've got to, I've got to get armed up. And especially now that I have over ten thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars to get a loadout to get perks, to get ghosts, that can be important. The late game, everyone's going to have their perks, and especially in solos, everyone's pretty much going to have ghost, unless they choose to do overkill. A lot of people do choose to use overkill, um, but people are going to have heartbeat sensors. So there's a lot of heartbeat sensors in Warzone, uh, so it's good to have ghost, so it's good to have a loadout drop. That's why I'm moving towards a buy station right now. But also listening for loot boxes. Here I find a slightly better M4 which ends up being my buddy for a while. Matter of fact, I believe I hold onto this weapon until the last kill of the game. So now I've got my self-revive. Again, I take that first over the loadout drop. I, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe thinking back on it now, maybe I would take the loadout drop first. Um, but also I believe I'm being chased by the gas. I think that was the big, the big reason I took the self-revive is because the gas is pushing me. So I didn't want to wait for the loadout drop to come in. Although it comes in quickly. I'm trying to move cover to cover and get to the edge of the circle. Every once in a while I stop sprinting and that's to listen for nearby footsteps. And when I hold completely still it's because I think I may hear footsteps. I'm also considering that the gas could be pushing other people in behind me. So I'm being mindful of that. I hear a gunfight over here. I think about going over there and seeing if I can mop up with whatever's left, uh, but I, I think better of it because I know I'm not in a super strong position and I don't want to just wander into a situation where someone might have a heartbeat sensor and know that I'm coming. So you can see I'm using the peak, uh, peak door to open doors more quietly and not trying to make a lot of noise here. And I believe as I move out to the right here, I hear footsteps and then I hear someone coughing in the gas. And so one thing that I was working on at this time that I wanted to focus on, especially having a weapon like this that isn't, you know, I mean, the M4 is a good weapon and the Purist is not too bad, but um, without having my loadout drop, I want to focus on getting headshots to drop people quickly. So that's what I'm thinking. I hear this guy. I hear him coughing. I hear him closing in on me. And I know I'm about to get into a gunfight, and I want to focus on headshots. So sometimes it's good to kind of keep yourself in that moment and say, okay, I need, what do I need to do in this next fight? So I pop my UAV to see who's near me. Check for anyone who's nearby. Set a spot that I want to go to that's hopefully not, you know, that's somewhere safe in the circle where I'll have cover, either in a building or some advantageous position, and uh, hopefully not in the middle where everyone's going to be around me shooting at me. So I'm following kind of the edge of the gas. This is a pretty typical BR strategy. Um, that way people are less likely to be coming in from behind me, in this case from my right side. 
So I'm trying to hug that as I move out to the position that I've selected. I also believe the reason that I am not completely armored up, and this happens to me sometimes, is when you lose just a tiny bit of a bar of health, so I think I probably lost one and then like a tiny bit of one, my brain says, okay, I only have to refill one bar, and then when you put on a plate, sometimes it only fills in that last little bit, and then I forget, and you know, my brain's already moved on to where I'm trying to go, so periodically I recheck my HUD to see what, what everything's going on, how much armor I have, and that's when I noticed my armor wasn't full up. The game decides to clear the point that I've set to that buy station, which is, you know, kind of where I was heading. So I'm like, okay, well, I don't want to be checking my map out here in the open. So I take cover for a second knowing this is dangerous. Um, I've got $9,400. I'm hoping that near this buy station there will be a crate or two or at least some money laying on the ground that give me the last $600 that I need to get my load out. That's what I'm, that's what I'm, I've got the self-revive now. I've got a decent amount of armor. Now I want my load out. That was me reminding myself what my secondary weapon was. I was like, if I have an SMG or a close range weapon, this is where I would want to pull it out. It's a riot shield, so it's the M4. <laughs> I consider grabbing the Bouncing Betty because those can be good to be a leave behind. You just pick it up, lay it down, and pick up whatever your lethal grenade was. Um, I decided not to because the gas is, is pushing. <laughs> another riot shield, another Bouncing Betty. And sadly, in both of those crates, no money. <laughs> <laughs> so I decide I'm not going to get a loadout drop, so I might as well get a UAV. Get in here where it's safer so I can check my map because I want to pop the UAV and look at the map to see where I want to go next. So I see people around me. I know there's a guy outside the circle on the right-hand side. He's going to need to be moving in with the gas, so I figure he's a good opportunity for me to go and get in the gunfight. I might be able to catch him running across the open. I see his he doesn't have much cover out there. So I drop a tag on where he is so I know where I'm going, and I'm going to be following the edge of the gas and trying to catch him as he's moving towards the circle. And you see I move all the way out to the right to kind of hug the edge of the gas so that hopefully people don't come in behind me. I also have to be cautious moving through the open like this. I could get sniped from the left, I could get someone coming behind me. So this is a bit of a risk, but I'm, I'm trying to move cover to cover so that if I get attacked, I can take cover somewhere nearby before I get melted. I don't see him where I marked him. He should be moving in, so I use this recon drone to see if I can catch him. I expect to see him running along with the gas to move into the circle. Um, so that's where I'm checking, and I don't see him. He's, he's likely, you know, in retrospect, going back through this, he's likely further off to the left. He's already probably run ahead of the circle. So he's not there. This is, it's probably who I run into next, but I knew there was someone over there. I don't see him, so now I'm a little concerned that there's now someone over there that I need to be aware of. So my right is very vulnerable right now, so I'm trying to move to cover. So here I'm in cover. This place has been looted, so I'm being aware of that. Still looking to see if that guy's out there. Um, running out to the buy station to grab another UAV. Again, the economy is really important in solos. Here you'll notice something. As I go in through looting this house, I open this door. Right there, I see a guy out by that hay bale, so I immediately get out of his line of sight. I don't want to give him time to line up on me, and he may think that I didn't see him. Um, he took cover, so now I'm in a gunfight. Um, I'm moving around to see if I can get a different angle on this guy. And when I pop my UAV, I notice that there's, that, there's another guy behind me. The purist doesn't have great attachments for recoil. I gotta move back to engage this guy, because now someone's behind me. I don't want to get caught in between them. So my priority now is the guy behind me. Luckily, he's kind of not knowing what he's doing. So I melt him, and now I'm turning back to the guy who I was originally in this fight with. You can hear the bullets hitting my riot shield, which just means he's missing me, because that makes me a bigger target, but <laughs> it reminds me that I've got that thing. So plating back up is important. He may have be low on plates. You, I don't want to re-engage a fight unless I'm armored back up. So now I'm looking for him over there, trying not to get caught stationary. Broke his armor, so now I want to armor back up. The gas is pushing behind me now, right? So I'm really aware of that. So I've got to push up. This is a tough fight. I don't really see him up in the window up there, but I assume that's where he went. So I'm about to throw a C4 up there. And he leaps out. He must have been out of ammo or low on ammo because he just jumped out at me. So won that fight. I, I saw his sniper rifle, and I would have loved to grab it. But with the gas pushing, I didn't have time. So I kept the riot shield and keep on moving. 
reminding myself again what my secondary weapon is. And I believe I'm starting to take shots from the right. I hear bullets whizzing by me. That's why I break off to the left. No, I can't climb these rocks, so decide to break off and see if I can get up the hill this way rather than getting exposed to getting shot from my right. I also know I'm very vulnerable and out in the open right now, so I'm, I'm serpentining, <laughs> so I was trying not to get shot and looking for cover. So now I've got the rocks and this tower protecting me a little bit for the right. I feel a little bit more protected from my right side, but I'm still moving erratically so as not to get an easy shot on someone. I open that door a little bit more quietly because I don't know who could be nearby here. I just sprinted a long way and I want to be careful and listen for people nearby. And now I also want to see if I can see the guy that was shooting at me. I know someone was out to my right, so I'm looking for him now that I have cover. And I see him. I check again. I don't have a sniper rifle. This weapon isn't great with these attachments, so I'm trying to see if he's going to come in even closer so I have a better chance of killing him in one burst rather than letting him get cover. He gets close enough, and it's exactly what I expected. I, I wasn't able to kill him, and uh, he got behind cover. And I see his scope glint, which means he has a powerful sniper rifle. So I try to get some shots on him, decide to disengage. I don't need to get sniped in the face. That's not going to help me. I don't have any extra armor. Um, so I'm moving away from this fight. He's going to still be thinking I'm there, so he's probably waiting and watching me there. I'm just going to move on. Trying to stay in cover. I'm thinking I want to move towards this loadout drop. That's, that might be my best bet uh, this late in the game since I'm low on armor and, you know, have a, a blue weapon. Uh, turns out to not quite be within my reach. And as I'm moving through here, I'm still listening for footsteps. Luckily, these buildings are metal, so luckily and unluckily, footsteps tend to be pretty loud through here. So you can hear people, but they can hear you. Using windows and cover to see if I can perhaps engage people who are also trying to move into the zone. There's less than 10 to go. You can win this. I'm moving slow now, so I'm thinking I must have heard footsteps nearby. Crouch walking um, makes you a lot quieter. When you aim while crouch walking, I believe you're essentially silent. So if you don't have dead silence, um, aiming and crouch walking uh, can keep you, keep you silent. See someone moving there. I don't want to reveal my position. Hoping there's maybe some plates or something here. Grab a recon drone. I don't end up using it. <laughs> this part of the game, I'd love to find dead silence. The gas is pushing in, so I'm trying to see if I can hopefully pick off some people trying to move into the circle, but I also want to make sure I don't get caught outside trying to run into the circle. And I'm also trying to get an idea of where people are. Eight people left in the game, which means seven plus me. Enemy UAV, I see a plate. Okay. Yes. I will point out there is something important that happens uh, as well. A um, couple things throughout the game that were important, but there's a pickup here in a second that turns out to be critical late game. I've already bought the self-revive. That turns out to be critical as well. Another plate. That's helpful. Small circle, late game. I'm being very quiet. I don't know where anyone is. This would be another nice place to have a UAV. So instead I'm listening for footsteps and for gunfire. I hear a shootout going on over here. So I decide to come and engage the, hopefully the loser. Uh, I consider taking cover inside this trailer, but decide that they'll probably trap me. So I'd rather stay back here. There's gunfire coming across. So I know there's people left and right. I'm looking for the guy on the right. He ends up coming around. He was already weakened from that gunfight. So I get him. Here's the critical pickup. Looking through his stuff, gas masks. Gas masks matter. It's going to be a critical part of this game. He also probably had some weapons I could get to, but the gas is pushing. So I prioritized what I thought was important. I got the gas mask and I moved. Uh, earlier I heard a sniper off to this side. So I'm trying to push the left side to see if I can get behind that sniper. I hear shots. I'm still moving along the edge of the circle, hoping to find somebody, seeing if there's some gear or some that I can pick up. Find a guy right here. I down him, I reload. 
He's got self-revive, so he doesn't go straight out. Gotta finish him off. So now here's where I've got a little bit more time, and I pick up his, what was it, an M13? I consider taking another weapon, decide to hold on to the right shield again. I'm looking for people here, knowing I'm exposed to the left, but trying to use some cover. I don't know where this comes from. I think maybe up there by that loadout drop, but I just take a lot of shots. I'm not sure where from, so. Gas mask, so I'm armoring back up, and I'm in the gas, and then I get sniped. Self-revive. Gas mask, self-revive became critical right here. So what I need to do is get back into the zone, behind cover. I'm thinking that guy's probably still looking at me. He may be distracted with someone else now. So I take cover, I got a plate up. I'm just waiting for the deadly shot to come in and kill me right now while I'm plating up. It doesn't happen, so I'm gonna hug the edge of the zone to the right and try and keep people, for, cause I hear shots coming from the right. And so that's what I'm looking for. And this guy's getting pushed by the circle. I got surprise on him. I down him, he's got self revive. Finished him off. Did you see who it was? <laughs> the last guy that I killed, Obscuro. The guy that killed me, that sent me to the gulag sitting in that room waiting on that bounty contract was the last guy in the circle so sweet sweet revenge i got the victory by killing the guy who killed me and uh yeah i didn't get my loadout drop in that game i i i had a a blue a rare weapon until uh you know the final circle and i you know picked up someone's you know m13 uh just for the last kill and the uh uavs the self-revive and the gas mask turned out to be critical to getting a victory. Not an outstanding game, like not pro level elite skills, but just solid tactics and good decision making. And and there it is, there's a victory. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. Um, I enjoy kind of doing these uh, breakdowns and uh, giving you guys strategies and tactics that you can use. Um, you know, I can't, I can't give you 500 hours of experience on the controller or the keyboard and mouse and make you a better shot. Um, but until that happens, I can give you tactics and techniques to make you better uh, at any shooting game. So, you know, you don't have to be the best shot in the world to, to get wins. And uh, hopefully this helps you guys do that. So uh, if you like this, leave comments with your thoughts and your tips. Um, subscribe for more of this. And I will talk to you guys later. See you, minions.